Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. On today's show, we're joined by the co-editor of the book, Vibrant Virginia, Engaging the Commonwealth to Expand Economic Vitality, described as a multifaceted glimpse into the many ways that regions across the Commonwealth are working to cultivate strong, robust, and inclusive economies. Sarah Lyon Hill is the Associate Director for Research Development at the Center for Economic and Community Engagement at Virginia Tech. And Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks, good to be here. Appreciate it. And we should mention that your co-editor, Margaret Cowell, could not be here today, but... Unfortunately, okay. no. We're glad you made it here. And um, this is the book that we're talking about, Vibrant Virginia. Uh, looks like a lot of work in here. And uh, first of all, before we get into it, talk about the motivation for putting this book together, which is sort of like a how-to that you're, you're hoping that communities and maybe government people will, will take a look at. Talk about the motivation for this book, which really started, what, 2018? Yes, 2017 actually. Um, we really, um, coming out of the 2016 presidential election, as well as you know the recession from you know the 20, 2008, 2012. Um, we, as practitioners um, throughout Virginia, in Virginia, a community economic development practitioners, um, we've kind of seen the, this growing div diversion, the divisiveness between kind of urban, rural. Um, but at the same time, I think in some ways we thought of that as kind of um, a just just a prop in a sense, where in reality um, there's this huge spectrum. There's so much going on in this state. Um, there's so much going on um, within different communities throughout um, the Commonwealth that we really wanted to kind of touch on that and understand how, you know, urban rural is actually a spectrum. It's, um, there's a lot of opportunities that go on and there's a lot of issues that go on um, both in urban and rural places and how can we learn from each other, mm -hmm. essentially. It, it's interesting, you know, if you live in Nova yeah. or a populated part of the state, maybe you yearn for a little bit simpler way of life. It's one of the reasons people come to Roanoke, but, but you look around, like you said, like even recently, there's a developer in Roanoke, a couple of developers that are rehabbing old schools exactly. in yeah. Martinsville and Henry County, because there's a growing industry base there and people need good places to live, that type of thing. So that's mm -hmm. part of the spectrum. You don't hear a lot about that. You hear more about the Amazon, Amazon H2Q2 or something. Exactly. And I mean, you think about, say, say Roanoke. I mean, Roanoke technically, is, like when if someone from Northern Virginia, Roanoke is rural. Right. And, you know, we're here today. And uh, for, for us, I mean, this is this is the big city. Big city, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> for most of Southwest Virginia. Mm -hmm. So it's really a lot of the perspectives that really come into play here. But again, we all have the sim similar challenges. We're all like trying to approach and trying to really create what, what is our place, what is our community. In the introduction to the book, you talk about the single day in 2018. Yeah. Amazon announced the HQ2 headquarters in Arlington, which Virginia Tech is kind of spinning off from that. Uh, meanwhile, at the same time, Martinsville announced an economic development project uh, to recruit manufacturing jobs. A gift shop opens in Galax and a music festival in Virginia Beach. That's all in one day. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on and a lot of people may not know about it outside of their little sphere. Exactly, and I think that was kind of, that, that was a, a great example that we wanted to put together is, you know, there, there's so much going on, depending on whatever day it is, you know, things happen. Mm -hmm. um, the urban-rural continuum, why is it important to know about that, Sarah? Why is it important for people to know that it's not just things going on in a Nova or a, a Roanoke or a Blacksburg? Mm -hmm. Why is that important? That's a really great question. Well, I think often we do think in the way of, and again, this was this was coming up like urban and rural, and right. you know that that it's it's just one that's this big heavy dichotomy. When in reality, um, depending on where we are, um, things are different. We, you could be in kind of an urban center, such as you know, I mean. Many people who visited Blacksburg, uh, where where I work, um, think of it very rural. But for that area, it, that that's that's the urban center. Um, and in the, and in the long run, you're thinking we have to think more in regions. We have to think of and more in terms of you know how urban and rural connect, um, particularly as we strive to grow economically and grow um, in, in an inclusive way. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so understanding that spectrum, understanding that understanding that continuum is really important. How how do we bring everyone with us? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Like you know, you have Nova, you have Roanoke, Blacksburg, even a Galax or a Clifton Forge or something. But in order to one thing is in order to get people to move to those areas, you've got to have an urban center. You have to have things Often. going on. You have to have redevelopment. Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of cases and places for people to live and yeah. things to do. Have that, that, that infrastructure. Thing. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Vibrant Virginia was actually launched, you said 2017. It was sort of uh, inspired by a similar effort, effort at Oregon State University. They did something, One Oregon. Yeah, they did that. Um, and actually, uh, the director of our uh, of the community and economic uh, community, Center for Economic and Community Engagement, I'm sorry, we just rebranded and it's, <laughs> uh, it's a mouthful. Um, our director, John Provo, he uh, did his PhD over in Oregon and he actually helped to, I think, I, I think he helped to um, and, and played his small part in the book itself. And mm -hmm. so um, he was very much inspired by that idea of, you know, looking at the state, looking at the different regions of the state. Um, and how it kind of all works together eventually. Um, so uh, we wanted to look at that for Virginia, mm -hmm. and kind of get a better understanding of, you know, how all of these, honestly, I, if you look at all of the many authors involved in this book, right. I mean, and they're only just like a small portion of the, all of all of the activity that go, goes on in this state mm -hmm. um, to really move the state forward and, 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 and develop it. So um, it was that aspect. Is, it, is this something that's been ongoing in the state or has is it, is it been like a, a catalyst over the last five, 10 years that mm -hmm. we want to compete with other states, for instance? We, we have to, we have to get, our, get, our, get our game going. I think so. I think um, to some, I, if you see like the changing leadership in Virginia Economic Development Partnership, uh, you see um, us understanding how we all have to kind of move together to some extent. Um, and j again, this divisiveness, it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily, it, it doesn't bring everyone along. So how do we really think and, and reinvent our communities, ourselves, and how, um, appreciating what our history and our culture ha has has come to, to mean to us, mm -hmm. but also see like how we can change and evolve moving forward. You were mentioning that you, is it your department that works with the Go Virginia initiative, which is an economic development uh, yeah. initiative, which is divided by regions. Yeah, um, we are actually the staffing agency uh, for Go Virginia Region 2, which is uh, the New River Valley, Roanoke, and Lynchburg together. Okay, so you're the staffing agency, okay. Yes, yeah, so we, um, we help the council. Uh, we, we try to, you know, push the papers, make sure that, you know, that we have um, a lot of different projects and really interesting projects going through the program. Um, and then, of course, the council, um, as, as the leader, really decides, you know, what programs get funded, um, mm -hmm. what initiatives can be piloted through the Go Virginia program, and, and then, you know, how hopefully it helps to grow high-wage jobs and right. investments in our region. It seemed like Go, Go Virginia took about a year or so to gain its traction. It, I've talked to, is it Glenn Feldman, Greg Feldman mm -hmm. about it, but it seemed like it's really gained some traction now. And that the so. money they're getting in and dispersing is going to really interesting programs. So did it just take a while to kind of get in gear? To some extent, and I think it's hard when when you first start uh, ha to to see those impacts and see how things are really influencing each other. I mean, even within the first year, I think we got a good um, six or seven projects going. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the impacts of those projects and like the real momentum that those projects have developed have only started developing within the right. last year, year or so, I would right. say. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not yeah. dissing the program or your text part in oh, it, but, no. but I'm, I, I've heard, I even heard from people with Go Virginia, that it just, just took a while to get it a year, did. but it seems like it's really hit its stride. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also, yeah, to get buy-in and other that, because it was, it was very much like right at the beginning, you know, there, it was, again, some people um, what is it? Yeah. were basically like, <laughs> okay, let's try this out, we'll see how it goes, and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think a lot of people right now are starting to see kind of the various things that are coming out of it, and you know, that it, hopefully, Fingers crossed it might be a useful program for mm -hmm. us in the future. You were saying with Vibrant Virginia that you had a lot of input from the authors and you actually oh, yes. more than got in here. Uh, were you surprised at some of the material you got back to edit? I mean, was there just a lot of really good good information when you got got it back from the authors? 
I think, yeah, I think all of the authors came from a very unique perspective. Um, and, and really, uh, n their know-how and their expertise that went into each of these uh, different chapters. Um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. I, I, I honestly learned a lot when I was like reading through mm -hmm. all of them and being like, oh wow, this is I, I, like some things I had no idea that were going on um, in Virginia and that this is something that could really um, influence other, uh, others and, and, and help communities. I think that's one thing you talked about, the urban-rural continuum where you can find out you're in Fairfax or wherever, mm -hmm. or Harrisonburg, but you find out that somebody in Martinsville is doing something really neat. Yeah. You can glean off of that without, without having to reinvent the wheel. Is that part of what you wanted to do? To some extent, yeah. Have, to have a lot of that cross-pollination, mm -hmm. I think, was a very, very important. Um, and, and learning about how different, uh, different groups are um, approaching, say, like the opioid crisis or approaching uh, different visions for how to recreate their community or how to re-envision their community more inclusively. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so what are different, co what are other communities doing that we could learn from? Mm -hmm. And in one chapter, I think chapter one, you, the authors uh, kind of challenge the readers to think, think about regional connectivity with a new focus on cluster-based strategies mm -hmm. to bridge the urban-rural divide, especially in rural and lagging reason, uh, regions. Talk about that cluster-based strategy. W what is that about? Yeah, and a lot of that's taken out of, um, so if you like think um, way back to like uh, uh, economic development um, from Porter, the idea of, you know, within these little, uh, within urban areas, we have uh, industries that are connected to one another. So you th all the way through the supply chain where, you know, one industry develops a product for another industry, develops a product for another industry, and right. you kind of have that all in one geography. Traditionally, that's looked at as very urban-centric, um, whereas actually you see today, um, like even in quote, more quote unquote rural areas, you see those clusters developing within these larger span of regions. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, looking at say the transportation, a transportation cluster in just this region here, where you have a whole lot of machine shops, you have a whole lot of um, supply chain companies that could really con that contribute to you know some of our uh, larger transportation developers such as you know Mac, Volvo, which with within 40, 50 miles of each other. Exactly. I know one of the reasons the guys from Mac Trucks, located in Roanoke County, they told me is because of the proximity to. Mm -hmm to Volvo where they can kind of supply, you know, share supply chain and yeah. materials, that type of thing. And exactly, and how do you better, and how can, so how can this larger region that is both uh, urban and rural, in, depending on where you are, um, how can we better align all of these, uh, all of these companies together um, to honestly create more value for our region? Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, this is kind of off topic, but w what do you think about the train coming to the New River Valley? That connectivity, will that, will, if it can connect to Roanoke and ultimately to D.C. or Richmond, mm -hmm. will that help? I think so. I think as long as um, that, w in combination with um, a lot of the inf uh, in, um, investments into broadband, mm -hmm. um, I think that could really, really help and support um, the connectivity that you have to, yeah, large no northern Virginia to down here um, and how, how we all, you know, interact with one another. You talk about broadband, and this is something that uh, Sarah was really kind of laid bare during the, you know, pandemic when you know, people were forced to work at home or mm -hmm. kids forced to go to school at home. Like my son, a tech graduate who spent the last two semesters in his bedroom with his, yeah. with his laptop. But, um, you know, and you hear a lot, it's become a buzzword, but how important is it to get that connectivity, even to attract remote workers who want to move into an area and maybe their company is based in Nova, but they, they want to work and, and live in Blacksburg or Christiansburg exactly. or whatever. How important is that to, to, to get that in place? Uh, that's vital. I mean, broadband nowadays is it, it's, it's like electricity, it's like water, it's how we operate in our society. Um, the chapter on broadband in Vibrant Virginia was spectacular in kind of highlighting the need of not only just, you know, yeah, being able to keep, keep up with, you know, larger mm -hmm. urban areas um, and, having, and the, having that infrastructure, but it's also if, you know, if we want to grow businesses, if we want to, you know, if, if we want to grow a whole um, center of, of, of economic prosperity in mm -hmm. this region, um, you need broadband. Mm -hmm. um, so it is really, and, and like 
a lot of people have said now political leaders it, it should be considered infrastructure it's total yes mm -hmm. exactly and how do we yeah and how, how do we ensure that it's funny after the internet's been around for almost 30 years now it's like we finally figured out a really good reason to have the internet during the uh during the pandemic, during the pandemic yeah. to keep people working and keep people learning. It became, yeah, so much more vital <laughs> than we ever could have imagined. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I wanted to talk, one of the things that you bring up in the book, uh, and again, the book is Vibrant Virginia, and uh, Sarah is the uh, co-editor, uh, entrepreneur ecosystems, connecting them across urban and rural uh, regions, better for all parties involved. And that seems like there's been, in this area, there's been, uh, you know, more emphasis on developing entrepreneurs. Yeah. I know that, uh, both here in Roanoke and in Blacksburg, they want to build wet, dry lab, mm -hmm. rentable spaces, Very that important. type of thing. But how important is that to nurture and to fund some of these people, whether it's seed money from Go Virginia or another program? How important is that to really grow the economy, especially in more rural areas? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we always talk about these we, we have very large companies and they're very large employers and we want and we want to keep them and we want to nurture them. Um, but at the end of the day, what is it like 50% of our employers are small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and if you really want, um, particularly, you know, you have these spin outs coming out from Virginia Tech and all of these other areas, they have great ideas. If you want to keep them here, then instead of say going off to you know Silicon Valley or uh, Maryland or all these uh, these other areas where you know th they are historically strong in nurturing and growing their mm -hmm. their entrepreneurs, um, if if we want to keep them, th then we need to develop those systems. We need to develop those wet labs. We need to develop along the scale of um, business development. We need to provide those resources, um, and that is the way that you know we hopefully get to grow and nurture our own businesses who have a real um, strong connection to this community. Mm -hmm. One of the things when you were, uh, uh, one of the things you do involve, Sarah, with putting the book together was you had uh, community and campus conversations and seed grants to faculty and even mm -hmm. students to kind of promote that. Um, I'm just wondering if you, can, if you, you know, can talk about that at all. Were there, were there some interesting things that came out of that conversation about how to tie the, uh, urban and rural areas together. Yeah. Um, ooh, okay, so yeah, we had, um, so uh, our larger Vir Virginia, Vibrant Virginia initiative was um, including this book. This was actually probably the, um, the cherry on top, um, but we were really doing so many different activities from, um, we did have seed grants, so actually a lot of the authors in this book um, had received seed grants through Vibrant Virginia to do their work. If you look, there's a, um, a great chapter on refugees and community and how do, how do communities kind of help and welcome refugees into their areas. Mm. Um, there's a center that has come out of that, um, most recently at Virginia Tech, that's really looking at the, um, the, the center for, ooh, I'm not gonna remember it. Um, this is uh, basically uh, for, for, for refugees and community development. To help mainstream them in? in yeah. Get, okay. Yeah, to, hel yeah, to hel hel help welcome them into communities. And um, oftentimes you have, when refugees come into the area, I mean, they may not know all of the resources available. You have particularly smaller communities may not even have those resources. So how do we develop the resources to really um, help, you know, keep their cultures alive, but also help integrate them into the community. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, so you see, you see all of the, yeah, all, all of these different activities through the seed grants coming around. And then, uh, yes, going through to the community conversations, uh, we went, uh, I, my colleagues, um, brought several um, Virginia Tech faculty um, and some other university faculty actually along um, to see all, um, to go all around Virginia and really talk and hear about what's actually mm -hmm. going on in these communities, in these regions. And it's amazing when, you know, <laughs> when, when, you know, a faculty just sit and they listen to what's going on in these communities, to what are the priorities, what are the needs of these communities, like how many things just kind of click and be like, oh, wait, right. you know, this is happening over here. Why, do, why don't we make these connections? Yeah, um, a continuum you talk yeah, about. That yeah, that continuum of, yeah, what's going on. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, there, uh, so projects like that have come out where, you know, um, different partnerships have come where that would not have uh, otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, again, activities like this happen all over the state. So right. it's how, do, how, how do we better learn from each other? Were there, were there a lot more things in common between urban and rural needs than maybe was realized? 
I think more so. I think we have a lot of challenges that we, we share. Um, looking at, say, uh, STEM and workforce development um, is something that's a challenge across any sort of community. Um, the uh, opioid crisis um, is definitely something that has challenged very much far southwest Virginia, but even when we were talking to communities, you know, in more like the urban crescent, that is still a challenge. And, and it's a drag on economic it. activity. Too. Oh, completely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, that, that's where you see like the connection. Uh, I think our last section is looking at community health and connectivity with um, with economic development. And if, if you don't have a healthy community, if you don't have you know healthy citizens, um, how are you going to have you know all this economic development that we want? Right. And you see that a lot in rural Southwest Virginia, even like they have the annual uh, medical event at, in Wise or something mm -hmm. where thousands of people show up. Yeah. And they just not, you know, and then with the opioid crisis, there are, if you read Dope Sick or something, there are towns decimated where exactly. if people are hooked, they're not going to get a job, they're not going to be able to land a job. And, and some companies are going to say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there, I'm not going to put a factory there because I can't rely on workers showing up every day so exactly and, and and it's hard and it's difficult and I mean it, to the most part I mean it's it, it's not it's not these communities fault it's just this whole horrible cycle that of, of, of it just keeps going and going mm -hmm. and so how, how do we as a society really help to support individuals with um, with drug addiction so yeah we have a couple of minutes so if I wanted to mention yeah. stem since you brought it up um, you know, we hear STEM, 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 Virginia Western, which is right next door, is big on STEM. Oh, yes. But then you, you, so. you read these reports still, Sarah, that, you know, there's all these jobs that are, cannot be filled, that people need sk skilled workers. Um, does Vibrant Virginia offer any solutions maybe for moving the needle on STEM literacy? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Uh, we have some... I, again, we, we do have a chapter uh, on STEM um, that's looking at how do universities and education and education institutions better work with um, employers themselves mm -hmm. to get a better sense of you know what 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 is the changing dynamic and what is the changing environment in in work in in, in, in employment areas mm -hmm. that, and what, what do they really need and so how do um, students in particular when you know the, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was in junior high, I would have no clue, no clue. what was needed right. <laughs> and what, or and no, I, I, I wouldn't have even imagined becoming an engineer, to be honest, because, I mean, my parents weren't engineers, mm -hmm. so how, how would I have learned about these things? Right. Or how would I have learned to be, like, the, the idea that there are opportunities for machinists out there, for electricians, for all of these. Um, we can make really good money. That could make amazing amount of money, but how would you know that? Um, and so this idea of, you know, how can um, a higher ed, a K through 12, um, higher ed um, and different uh, companies work together to better, right. you know, put help not only the students, but also maybe talk to the parents too, and, and, right. and get parents like say, hey, here are some opportunities that, you know, if, if your kid, if this is, this could be a passion for your child. Right, yeah. and I think that's why I wanted to mention that is that we need to push it down. I know I was telling you off air that uh, the Virginia Employment Commission held a, an open house yeah. where they had all these local employers set up and they were bringing thousands of middle school students yeah. in. Do we see, need to see more of that where you get kids thinking at an earl earlier age about what they want to do? I th yeah, I think it's not even just getting them to think about what they want to do or just exploring what are the options, I, I would say more so. Um, like they don't have to decide on, you know, by the time they enter high school, this is what I want to do. I'm going to go pre-med and all of this. Um, but it, it's good to know what are your options and, and that motivation mm -hmm. about like, this is why I go to school. You're not going to school just because you know you need a daycare where you know while when your parents go to work you need you need school because there is so much knowledge out there and so many things that you could learn from and that you could grow and that you know in in the end you might you might take that with you mm -hmm. to a job you might take that with you to throughout your honestly throughout your life right um, and it's just yeah um, I don't know I. I'm very much a proponent of kind of liberal arts um, sort of thing. So the idea of understanding um, a wide spectrum of different knowledge. And you talk about that in the book about areas that are developing their cultural attractions as a exactly. way to attract people. Patrick Henry, uh, Patrick, Patrick County, County, yes, outside yeah. Roanoke. Exactly. It's important for quality of life, and that attracts 
completely. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's 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 about you know it's it's about a broad spec uh, urban rural spectrum, broad spectrum of knowledge and different understandings and understanding our history, understanding our culture, um, understanding how to communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. I mean that it, I mean. STEM hopefully will help people with that as well. Right. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it, it's very expansive. Got about a minute left. I just want yeah. to ask you, Sarah, what, what do you want people to come away with if they pick up Vibrant Virginia or they can read it online? What, what do you want them to come away with? Um, I hope it sparks some sort of creativity or some sort of ideas in people's heads about, you know, how their communities might move forward or might change or, you know, a, or, or, you know, create a, a more inclusive, vibrant, you know, community within, mm -hmm. within the state. Okay, well, Sarah Lyon Hill is the co-editor of Vibrant Virginia. Sarah, thanks for joining us today for a very interesting conversation. Thanks for having me. This is Business Matters. I'm Gene Morano.